So I want to actually do this one with you. And here is a good piece of advice for any measurement that you're going to do. Don't even look at where these little arrows are. Just go ahead, draw yourself a line in between one of the divisions, wherever. OK, so how about right here? That is in between two tick marks, in between the smallest marks you have possible on your measuring equipment. And then go ahead and measure that. So if I put this green line here, looking at my board, what do you want to call that measurement? 22? OK. 20 points. in between 20 and 21. So 20 point two. I'm going three. OK. So that's just some random measurement I've picked that is appropriate for this meter stick. It tells anyone else that I actually had this many little tick marks, that I had this many divisions, because that's the only way I would know this number for sure, and this would be the guess. So look at how many decimal places you have. Two. No matter what measurement you're reading, you need to have two decimal places if you're using this meter stick. Because again, that tells somebody else, well, basically, that you are using a meter stick with this many divisions. So that, that's sort of your rule of thumb. Just make a random measurement in between some marks. Look at how many decimal places you have. And then any of your other answers better have two decimal places. So that leads me to, to C here. What would you say for C? Because the rest of these are kind of in the middle, maybe not E. But what would you say for C? Twenty point. Okay, there's five, six, seven, eight. Okay, if you have a number that you think is exactly on the tick mark, you have to still represent the correct number of significant figures, which we already know has got to be two, two decimal places. So here you would throw in a zero. You might not think that zero is necessary. And I realize your calculator thinks that's unnecessary. It would be the same either way if you typed it on your calculator. But to tell somebody else how good the measuring equipment was that you were using, you've got to have two decimal places. So like I said, try to make just one random measurement. Just look at how many decimal places you needed. And then make sure all the rest of your answers have two decimal places. Even if you thought it was right on to like 22, how would you record that? Yeah, it would have to be with two zeros, 22.00. So make sure you got two decimal places. OK. Um, go ahead and try the rest of those. Then you have thermometers. Pay attention to where your negative signs are for your thermometers. I think a couple of those are negative. And you have some volume measurements where you got to read that middle part of the meniscus. Tell me the answer before you put it in scientific notation. So looking at Addison's answer, you know, if you just did this on the calculator, hopefully you wouldn't even need a calculator, you would get 15.655. Um, but Addison went ahead and rounded it to 15.7. Is that correct? Yes. This is an adding problem. So this is, this is looking at precision. Not necessarily how many sig figs there are, which, by the way, how many sig figs are in this number? Two. <laughs> How many sig figs are in this number? Three. Three. So we're actually not looking at that. We're looking at how precise the numbers are when we add and subtract, basically meaning you know, how many spots after the decimal. So this would have three spots after the decimal. This one only has one, though. So you have to go with least precise. So we have to end with one spot after the decimal, but she correctly rounded up. So 15.7 is correct. Addison, can you go one step further and put it into uh, scientific notation. Perfect. Times 10 or times 10 to the 1, either way, same thing. 
All right, very good. That is correct. All right, I'm going to do the next one real quick. So this was now a multiplying problem. Um, sailor. Okay. And then, what's your final answer? To the negative what? Okay. All right. 0.858 is what you should get on the calculator. But the question is, can I keep all those digits or not? Am I following my sig fig rules? So, oh. These are the same numbers. You just told me that 0 0.055 had two sig figs. So this really doesn't have anything to do with specifically the number of spots after the decimal. It doesn't have to do with precision like that. It has to do with number of sig figs. So, Sailor, we do need to round this because this number has two sig figs. So my answer can only have two significant figures. So what should it round to? Yeah. Round that 0.85 to 0.6. We've got to get rid of that. And that is correct. Should be 8.6 uh, times 10 to the negative 1. Or again, you know, when we round it, it should be just 8.6. All right, now number 3 and number 4. Let's actually do number 4 first because we haven't yet done a subtraction problem with figs. Sometimes it is easier to uh, set it up like this with a numerator and denominator. Because not all of you are using scientific calculators, so not all of you can put in 10 to the exponent on your calculator. But you shouldn't need to. And if you have a multiplying dividing problem with scientific notation, there's simply rules for what you can do with the exponents. And if it's a division problem like this, where's Alec? Do you remember the rule for just this part? How do I deal with the 10 to those? Yeah, if it's division, you can just subtract them. So I'm going to have a times 10 to the something. But <coughs> even without my calculator, I can just say, all right, well, negative 3 minus the denominator. If you're dividing, you would always subtract the bottom one. So that would be negative 3 minus minus 5. Positive 2. OK. So that's the part I circled in green. Now separately, so you can easily do this on any calculator, you should take care of the division part. And Alec, what'd you get there? Oh. <coughs> yeah, all right, so we got 2.00381. Yeah, we got lots of digits here. But we've got to round it at some point. Alec, where do you want to round it to? Yeah. This is a division problem. It's, you know, essentially 8 divided by 4, essentially 2. But we've got a whole bunch of decimals. But we do have to round it to only two significant figures, because 4.2 is our least number of sig figs. It only has two, so our answer can only have two. Uh, so Alec is right. It really should be 2.0. 2.0 times 10 to the 2. Now, if you've got your graphing calculators, your scientific calculators, you can probably just type all that in in one big line. But just be careful when you actually record your answer. You know, make sure you're recording simply the two significant figures. OK, so finally, a problem with scientific notation and you know, addition or subtraction. In this case, it is a subtraction problem. So, set it up like. K 
can I just go ahead and do 8.41 minus 4.2? Like I just did with the division problem. I went ahead and just did the 8.41 divided by 4.2. Can I just go ahead and subtract the leading numbers? Can't do it. Because they're not the same magnitude. When we're dealing with addition and subtraction of scientific notation, you've got to make sure your times 10 to the part matches. That these are the same magnitude numbers. So it doesn't matter which one you change, but you've got to change one of them. So which one's actually the uh, bigger number here? Yeah, times 10 to the negative 3. So I'll leave that one as is. And I'm going to change my 4.2 to be something times 10 to the negative 3. But I still want to represent the same number. So if I am changing my exponent by 2, negative 5 to negative 3, Changing by a factor of 2. I've got to move my decimal place two times. But which way? To the right. To the right. To the left. 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 Okay. Did I make the exponent bigger or smaller? Exponent bigger. I actually made it bigger because 10 to the negative 3 would be a bigger number than 10 to the negative 5. So if I make my times 10 to the bigger, I've got to make my leading number smaller to still represent the same thing. So you're right. So to make it smaller, that would be left. To the left, to the left. Huh? So now I have 8.41 minus 0 0.042. So again, this would be a way you could get around using the basic calculator. Let's see. If I can even do this. All right, so we got, you know, eight. Is that right? And now this would just remain times 10 to the negative 3. You could have taken them both completely out of scientific notation because these weren't like super big exponents, but. Now imagine you're dealing with times 10 to the negative 26 or something. You don't want to be moving your decimal place 26 times. OK, so I've got an answer. It's in scientific notation. Um, but have I followed my sig fig rules? The number of significant figures that I have, the number of significant figures, should not matter however I put it in scientific notation. This, you know. 4.2 times 10 to the negative fifth, all right, that's two sig figs. 0 0.042 times 10 to the negative third, okay, that's still two sig figs. But that's not what I care about for adding subtracting. I don't care about the number of significant figures I have. I care about the spot after the decimal place, the precision. In which case, I have to compare them with a matched magnitude, the matched uh, times 10 to the part. So let me make that even darker. Go with orange. So again, I am really comparing 8.41 and 0 0.042. How many spots after the decimal does this number go out to? Two. Two. How about this one? Three. Three. So I'm stuck with my well, my answer has to have how many? Two. Two. This is actually less precise than this. So if I have two spots after the decimal, this is where I have to end up. So there's just a lot of little steps you got to follow through in an adding subtracting problem like number three. First, of course, you got to make sure your magnitudes match, which we decide to make them both 10 to the negative three. Then you actually have to go ahead and do your subtraction. But then you have to compare precision not based off of the original numbers, because we wouldn't say, well, 4.2. Originally, that was only one spot after the decimal. Please don't say that. I can't really compare their precisions until they have the same magnitude, the times 10 to the negative 3. So the final answer would be 8.37. So that's about as hard as it gets.
If you follow that one through, give yourself a little pat on the back. It doesn't get harder than that, but I, I agree that that's kind of a, a long problem. Okay, let's see how we did with the uh, significant figures. So, for number one, we got a very basic subtraction problem. Shandini, can you give me your answer? I got uh, 4.21. Okay, and um, in scientific notation? 42.9 times 10 Okay, that would be true, but that's not scientific notation. I mean, just because you have a 10 to the something doesn't mean it's like true scientific notation. The best way to put something in scientific notation is to have the leading number between 1 and 10, which this actually already is. So this one's kind of a silly one to put into scientific notation, but you could write times 10 to the nothing. Um, but don't move that decimal place. Now, let's just double check and make sure that that is correct. Do we want that many digits, 4.21? You guys say no? Where should I round it to? Just 4.2. If these are measurements, of course I don't have any units, but if these are measurements, the adding subtracting rule is dealing with the least precise number. So that's really spaces after the decimal place. So 8.41 is more precise than 4.2. 4.2 just ends with one spot after the decimal, so that's where I actually need to, to finish. So it really should be 4.2 times 10 to the 0. All right, number two, the fun one. It would have been more fun if it was an adding, subtracting problem. If it were an adding, subtracting problem, you would have to change your, your magnitudes on the 10 to the, you'd have to change those powers of 10 to match before you could compare which is least precise or not. But anyway, since this is a dividing problem, uh, it's much easier. You can deal with the leading numbers separately, and then you can deal with the times 10 to the separately. So, Noah, what did you get for this answer? Uh, so you took it out of scientific notation. Okay. Um, well, we'll put it back into scientific notation, but so you got 200... Point twenty-three. Okay, took it out of scientific notation. Is that the correct number of digits, though, that you should keep? No, Apparently not. <coughs> How many significant digits does 8.41 have, Noah? Three. Noah, how about 4.2? Two. Okay, so since this is a dividing problem, I care about which number has the least number of significant figures. 4.2 has two. So really, where do I want to chop this off? Just take the two? OK, these are the two digits that matter. That's it. I don't need anything else. But I want to say that this zero matters. And of course, the best way to do it is by putting in scientific notation. So 2.0, OK, that is two significant figures. But no, if you want to represent the number 200, that's got to be 2 times 10 to the what? To the second. Very good. Because you'd be moving your decimal place twice. You could also have left it in scientific notation. You could have done 8.41 divided by 4.2. You would have immediately just gotten about 2, 2.0, and then dealt with the... 10 to those, which, what is negative 3? If you're dividing, do you add or subtract them? Subtract. So negative 3 minus minus 5? Two. Would have been 2. So it will get you the same answer. But the important part that I'm looking for is that you have the two significant figures. Adding, subtracting, we care about precision. Multiplying, dividing, we care about number of significant figures. All right, next one. Now we have an adding problem. Number three. Uh, Eric, what'd you get? You get all that, but put it in scientific notation for me.
Okay, move your decimal place one, that would be times 10 to the first. So you're just going to say 15.6. So you're going to keep three digits, is that correct? You guys agree? Good, that is right. And this seems a little odd that, you, I mean, you started with 15.6, you're adding something to it, and the answer you're supposed to record is 15.6. Well, since there's so much uncertainty in the number 15.6, we can't just add a precise number like 0.045 and say it is a more precise number because if we were uncertain about this 6 to begin with, we certainly couldn't say it's this precise an answer. Um, so this was again precision numbers of places after the decimal, so 0.6. So that's just one spot after the decimal, so that's really where I need to finish. So we kept that much and then Eric turned it into scientific notation, so that was correct. All right, one more. Number four, multiplying problem. Same digits, but now multiplying. Taylor. What do you got? Um, I got Okay, so when you multiply these numbers, you got 0.702? Yeah. Okay, and you move your decimal place one. Mm -hmm. So you put your negative one on there. She kept three digits. Um, is that correct? Yes. No, no, no. Uh -uh. Not for this problem. No, not for this one. Not for this one. Because how many sig figs are actually in the number 0 0.045? Two. Two. Okay, so this is... Um, sort of a placeholder. This really wasn't part of my measurement. The only significant parts that were in my measurement were the four and the five. So I can only keep two digits in my answer. So we're going to actually have to get rid of that two. But you have to keep the zero. Don't just drop off the zero because you think it doesn't matter. It does.